The Fishing News is brought to you by Shoreline Insurance, Navionics, Okuma, Yozuri, Evinrude, and the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk, New York. With all the wind last weekend, many boats stayed tied to the dock, but this weekend we have a lot to look forward to. Better weather and the opening of sea bass on Sunday, which Fred Galifaro has all the details coming up later. But first, let's check in with News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin. Hey there, Anglers, meteorologist uh, Rich Von Olin here, News 12 Long Island Weather Center. Big weekend coming up, first weekend of summer officially, and the start of the New York State Black Sea Bass season, yeah, officially on Sunday. So we're looking forward to that finally. Weather's going to cooperate, too. It looks pretty good. Water temps, uh, we got mostly 60s now all throughout. A little warmer in the canyons on the edge right there. Wave heights, a little more of a northwest breeze on Saturday. It's going to be gusty early till about 11 a.m. or noon. If you're going to head out, early is going to be choppy, but then late in the day, the afternoon, that looks like a good time to go. Maybe a late start Saturday should be okay. Sunday is the money day. What a beautiful day for the opener of that sea bass season. The ocean should be flat pretty much. A light breeze looks pretty good, and then it starts to get a little rough towards Sunday evening, but a nice window coming in with the high coming down put the winds on here again gusty early it's going to be a little bit rough early morning uh, Saturday but then it settles down nicely and then Sunday is great northwest 5 to 10 looks pretty good a little southwest breeze late in the afternoon but overall finally looks like a pretty good weekend on the way so enjoy happy angling enjoy the beginning of the sea bass season meteorologist Rich Von Allen News 12 Long Island before heading out be sure to check with News 12 for the latest weather if you're in the market for a cooler for your truck or your boat one that is reasonably priced, holds ice for days, and made in the USA, check out Orca Coolers at Marine Mate in Lindenhurst. From the East End, I checked in with Scott Leonard from Top Gun Charters, who now has his boat in Montauk and is doing pretty well with the fluke. Tuesday, Scott and Captain Al Lorenzetti culled through the shorts and dogfish to put this eight plus pounder in the box. Yesterday, Scott had a 10 pound fluke also on the south side, and he said less dogfish to fight through. And the key to the bigger fish was big spearing and strip baits. Now let's check in with Captain Tom Michaloski of Grand Slam Charters. Thanks, Tim. Hi, this is Captain Tom Michaloski out of Montauk. The jig bite is still red hot out here. Um, you get on the right tide, you can get some nice big stripers on the diamond jigs from anywhere from two to six ounces. If you don't get on the right tide, you're going to catch a bunch of shorts. Um, but still a lot of action, a lot of bluefish on the jigs. Also, you're going to catch some porgies, some fluke, and you're going to catch some big black sea bass, which the season doesn't open until Sunday, so they have to go back. Other than that, the fluke bite has been a little tough, but if you put your time in and drift out there on uh, the south side, say, or frisbees, and especially concentrate on uh, jigging bucktails, you always got a chance when you're a Montauk of, of hanging a big one. You might not catch a lot, but you got a better chance of catching a 10 or a 12 pounder in Montauk than any other um, any other place on the island. From Shinnecock, we have Mike Dean. Thanks, Tim. Uh, just about to make the drive back to East Quag from Montauk. Had an awesome day on the water on a 61 Viking, the Blue Eyes. Um, Freedom Fighters Outdoors, uh, fishing out in Montauk. Unbelievable organization. Uh, 26 of the America's brave and fearless warriors. Uh, just real treat to do that. Uh, Grand Slam was out there as well. Uh, everyone caught fish, had a good time. Fishing around Shinnecock, not much to report. Uh, still some small fish in the in the back bays, taking soft plastics at night, the day bite, not really much going on at all. Uh, guys soaking clams on the beach or getting a striper here and there, Mariches, giving up some fish, Shinnecock still giving off some bluefish on bucktails. Um, the fluke bites is uh, still really not materialized. Uh, we'll see what happens this weekend. The last weekend was a big struggle with the wind, so hopefully this weekend will shape up a little bit better for everyone. Um, you know, think that big body of striped bass is hopefully you're going to make their way east and uh, stop by Shinnecock uh, someday soon. Back to you, Tim. Thanks. From the Great South Bay, Captain Al Lorenzetti reports lots of short fluke in the bay and the bass on the bunker schools have seemed to move to the east. Best bet is sea bass on Sunday. Now let's check in with Captain Joey Leggio. Uh, fishing out of Deb's Inlet in the ocean side of it, it looks like the bass have slowed down. I mean, guys are going out, and I'm not hearing many reports on a troll for the stripers. Uh, Montauk, we all know, is starting to light up, so I guess that body of fish has moved down. And hopefully there's another body coming in from Jersey that will shoot across, but only time will tell. Uh, Sunday, I had out David for his birthday. We, we went over to the uh, Rockway Reef. When fluke fishing, the guys connected with between 50 and 60 fluke. 
with only uh, one keeper actually in all of those fish. There was some dogfish in the mix as well, but the uh, the quality wasn't there. On Monday, I took out Ari and his two kids, hit the bridge, my uh, little kid special that we like to do. I anchored up in the bay, we chummed, and within two hours, the kids had 15 stripers, uh, three bluefish, and again, three short fluke. Great trip for the kids, a lot of fun, lots of action, and it's always a good time. And of course, it's also in the bay. Uh, the 23rd is the opening of sea bass over here, so that's really good. Looking forward to that. Again, another great trip for the kids. Get down there, drop the baits down, high-low hooks, and just start reeling. You know, there's lots of action with that sea bass uh, bite we have over here on the reefs, the local reefs. On another note, the crab fishing was pretty good. I uh, went over to Bay Park today. Jimmy had his overnighter out, and he had a dozen crabs in the one trap just overnight. So that's pretty cool, something to look forward to. Again, great stuff for the kids. Blue claw crabs, a lot of fun to catch, and also very tasty as well. Uh, basically, that's it. So I'll let you know what goes on this week, and uh, hopefully we got some more reports and this rain finally stops. Let's see what Chris Ludwig has been up to. Thanks, Tim. What's going on, guys? So this past week, I've been doing the same thing, staying out in the open beach in the dark during the incoming tide, fishing bunker chunks and bunker fillets, trying to get a big predator fish to tag. Unfortunately, all we've been catching is large dogfish, and I can't really complain. You know, it's action. There was a lot of them. They've completely invaded, so we can't get a bait to stay for more than five minutes. <clears throat> Some people may like that. Um, also, when the t uh, excuse me, when the sun came up a couple of the trips, we found some really clear water. We put some chunks out, and the bluefish did show up. My buddy Robbie had one up to ten and a half pounds, and a couple other guys around us were catching fish in similar sizes. So it seems to be you know top of the incoming sunrise, boom, it was good. On the freshwater side of things, I've been fishing some small local ponds, targeting the pickerel and the largemouth throwing these type of spinner baits. This one happens to be a Kevin Van Dam half ounce. And this is my favorite guy here, the Lunker Hunt Frog. This guy gets it done, tearing this through the pads. You can see the bass come up and choke him. It's pretty cool. Uh, thank you guys and Coastal Memories Fishing. Check it out on Instagram. Have a good one. Check this out. On Sunday, Robert Perko caught this 42 pound 50 inch striper at Jones Beach near Field 6 and waded in a causeway bait and tackle. Nice job. From Sheepshead Bay, we have Luke They've been catching fluke all over by the Marine Park Bridge. They've been drifting under the bridge, on either side of the bridge, by the stanchions. They've produced multiple fish over eight pounds in the last week. That's a really solid bet. I've been fishing in by the Coast Guard Station and the Cove over there. That's producing some keepers. Over by the Roxbury Cove, where it dips in over there, by the jetties, it's been a really solid bet with a lot of shorts and some keepers mixed in. I've been hearing a lot of reports by Kingsborough College all around there, by the channel, on the edge of the channel, and even inside Sheepshead Bay a little bit. There's been some really solid short action. Not many keepers, but a few mixed in if you get lucky. So if you get out there, look at the chart. Those areas I just mentioned, that's a really solid bet. Anywhere you see structure, holes, ledges, get out there, you're guaranteed at least some decent short life and maybe some keepers too if you're lucky. The porgy action is really starting to build on the tin can grounds. They've been catch, starting to catch them in the last couple of days. And I'm sure after the year we had last year with all the action, everybody's really excited to get back out there for those porgies and have that kind of action again. I like the small diamond jigs, no bait, just the small diamond jigs. Get out the spinning rods, the really light spinning rods. Get out there, get on those marks, and it's a blast. That should be coming in the next couple of days. Get on that structure. Sea bass season opens in the next couple of days, and from the reports I've been hearing, they've been catching a lot of sea bass on both the Rockway Reef and the Atlantic Beach Reef. So get out there, find that structure. Get out the jigs or the bait, whatever you like. It's a blast, great table fare. There's still stripers to be had against common belief. They've been trolling some in between the channels over by Sandy Hook. They've, that's been slowing down a little bit, but there are plenty of stripers all the way in the back of Jamaica Bay. They're catching some on the live bait. Then I've been having a lot of fun throwing plugs in the marshes. That's a lot of fun. Get out the small spinning rods, any marshes you can find inside Garrison Creek in the back by Jamaica Bay. It's a blast to get out there in the morning or in the evening, and you're guaranteed some schooly life. And the bluefish have been everywhere, as opposite of last year. The bluefish are really everywhere. I've been catching them in my creek in Garrison Creek all on top waters. It's been a lot of fun. There's some bigger bluefish around in the back on the live bunker, but anything really you throw at them in those marshes mixed in with the striped bass, you have a pretty good shot catching some bluefish. From Staten Island, we have Mike Sentry. Thanks, Tim. Hey, fishermen. Hope all is well. Mike Sentry here. What can I say? Phenomenal 2019 season. To start off, here's my friend Mark with a 60-pound black drum caught a couple days ago. Outstanding catch. Outstanding fisherman right there. A lot of big bass being caught, guys, live lining bunker and bunker heads between the tip of Sandy Hook rip out to Breezy Point. Tons of bluefish, as many as you could catch, tons of them out there. Fluke, water temperatures heating up finally, a lot of shorts, 
usually within a quarter of an inch below legal size limit. So be patient, it's heating up. Offshore report, tons of fat albacore out there, guys. Oh my God, tons of them. Bluefin are still in the Hudson. They're wrenching a little bit further out. The big bluefins and big yellowfins are being caught a little bit southern canyons, like the Baltimore and the Spencer, a little bit too far of a drive for me. With that said, guys, God bless. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Life is great. Adios. The urban angler is like the energizer bunny and just keeps going. He hit his favorite spot in Queens on the flood tide over the weekend using fresh bait for this keeper. Asante sent me these few picks from the past week, including this 20-inch fluke from one of the urban angler's hotspots. He also shared with me this photo of this drum that looks like it may have been taken from the same pier, judging by the masonry work. Let's now check in with Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Tim. This Monday, the Loy and Fly Riders had their monthly uh, fishing trip out to the Connect Quad, and it was a good, successful day. Most of them had two, three, four fish. All large, all large. Mikey P had a beautiful fish. Uh, Vice President Mike for the Fly Riders. I spent my time out the Carl's River, Carmen's River, sorry, Carmen's River, and fishing right to dark, I finally landed a nice 12 inch wild brookie. It was not easy, but you know what? When I went, when I catch a fish there, I feel like it was a success. Beautiful river. Now, on the, on the saltwater scene, a lot of my guides are talking about all the big pods in the North Shore on the, out in the Sound. Big fish, big blue fish are on them. South Shore, fluke her up on the flats, still some blue fish around, fish the back bays for some nice, nice, nice stripers. So listen, get out there now. It's been raining, tight lines, everybody. So far, I think it's been a good spring for me. Hopefully, it's been for you. Tight lines, everybody. If you're looking for a quality fishing boat that's affordable, check out a Sea Pro powered by Suzuki. For less than $400 a month, get you into all the action. Visit Kale's Family Boating Center for a test ride today. From the North Shore, let's check in with Peter Tarnowski. Thanks, Tim. Fishing has definitely picked up here in the Northport area. Um, had friends with uh, Keeper Bass both out in the Sound and the Triangle area and also in the harbors and the back bays in the two feet of water. Um, fluking's okay. Uh, there's definitely action, but mostly shorts. And that's uh, for me and, and uh, from my friends out there as well. But the action definitely has picked up. The rain's not helping, so you know, you gotta squeeze in your time. Right now, just squeeze in a couple hours between thunderstorms, but uh, you know, do what you gotta do. Anyway, thanks, back to you, Tim. Let's get ready for Hawaiian Dan. All right, friends, reporting for the early morning bite after dropping Tommy and Sam off at the dock, and I gotta tell you, super hot and super fun. Plenty of porgies to be found, a plethora of sea robins, of course, fluke, cocktail blues, Schoolie stripers as you saw into the night and early morning and plenty of reasons to grab those rods and get off those couches and get out there and fish. I love you Long Islanders so until the next report this is your favorite man Hawaiian Dan signing out. Aloha. Now let's check in with Kenny Cannon. Thanks Tim. The fishing in the Northport Ash Rogan Eaton Zach Gary has been pretty consistent the past few weeks. Uh, mainly it's all porgy fishing. Uh, the fluke fishing has been really really slow. But uh, Porgy's in the Target Rock area as well as Sand City inside of Northport Bay. That's kind of where I've been catching them. And you can catch it from shore as well. So Hobart's Beach, that whole entire area on both sides of the, of the peninsula there as well as um, uh, Target Rock. If you have access to the Ashroken beaches, which most people don't, but if you do, uh, those have been producing Porgy as well. As far as freshwater go, the, the largemouth bass are absolutely on fire. Anything weedless, just throw it right onto the bank get into the nasty stuff and just work it off the bank and they're nailing it as soon as it hits the water. I've been catching fish 17, 18, 19 inches pretty regularly uh, all across the island. So that's been my focus uh, because again, I'm a fluke guy mainly and the fluke has just been nowhere to be found this season. For me, it's been really, really tough. So that's going to be my focus for this weekend. Porgies from the boat, porgies from the beach, and uh, whenever I have a free 20 minutes, half hour or an hour, I head down to my local ponds and local lakes and try to catch some of those largemouth. All right, guys, that is all. I hope everyone has a great week, and we'll see you next week. Back to you, Tim. The mosquitoes and the noceums are here, and any day now will be the green flies. If you're looking for an all-natural solution to protect you from these pests, try Captain Ron's, made from pure plant extracts, and it smells great, too. Available at your local tackle shops. Now let's check in with senior editor, Fred Galifaro. Hey, thanks, Tim. Yeah, a lot of frustration over the whole sea bass situation. 
Uh, guys have been catching lots of sea bass, a lot of big sea bass over the last several weeks, but unable to keep them due to the season being closed. Uh, the season, the good news is the season does open this Sunday, June 23rd. Opens with a three fish bag limit, a uh, size limit of 15 inches. The bag does expand to seven fish come September 1st, and that carries through until uh, December 31st. There's uh, you know, a lot of frustration because our neighbors to Connecticut and uh, New Jersey, uh, they both have seasons that open in May. New Jersey has a 12 and a half inch size limit for the first part of this season, and then they have a, it goes to 13 inches, which is still two inches smaller than what New York anglers can keep. Also, the uh, sea bass stocks, the last assessment showed um, that two, the stocks are two and a half times past the rebuilding stage. So, uh, again, a lot of frustration there. The good news, though, is starting Sunday, you can take some sea bass fillets home. Great eating. On the surf front, not a lot to report. Uh, very little effort from the guys I talked to uh, on yesterday. But uh, I, I did speak to Mike from Delaware. He was up, uh, he ran out to Montauk yesterday. And uh, he said it was very quiet. Uh, I know they had been getting a pretty steady bluefish bite on North Bar, False Bar, on top waters. But he said it was very quiet yesterday out there. Uh, Shinnecock still producing a mix of bass and blues, more blues than bass. Um, but there is life there. Um, Riches, the west side of Riches remains inaccessible due to plovers. And uh, Democrat too, the, uh, you know, the bar area is, uh, is out of, uh, not out of reach if you're willing to make the walk, but the uh, cutoff is about a thousand feet to the east of the uh, rock pile. And the backside is also closed down due to plovers. Uh, there was a black drum, 24 pounds, caught on the weekend. That was at the Cedar Gilgo area on a clam meant for a striper. That was by Joe Arena. So you never know what you're going to find when you throw a clam bait out there. And uh, John Paduano, he stopped at the Robert Moses Piers the end of last week, one, one afternoon. He had a bunch of small bass on, uh, on jigs, on light tackle. Uh, good place to check out when the ocean front's unfishable. Uh, a lot of bait gathers in those boat basins, so always worth a stop. They have been picking some nice bluefish there on occasion also. And the North Shore, still hearing primarily schoolies, especially that central part of the sound, with, uh, with occasional, uh, occasional fish to 10 or 12 pounds at night. Till next week, Fred Golifaro here for thefisherman.com. Here are the results from last weekend's Freeport Hudson Angler Shark Tournament. First place was the boat Halcon with a 298 pound thresher. Second place, not far behind, with a 281 pound thresher, and that was taken on the boat Lunchbox. Third place went to the crew on the Shark Bait 2 with a 300, I'm sorry, a 268 pound thresher. The word from Trophy Tackle and West Babylon. The area around the Cornbria is still red hot with bluefin, and they're a big eye at the dip and lots of small Makos anywhere from the Linda to the West. If you'd like to be part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we are looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York Metro and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact me at libayrat at gmail.com. For links and more information, be sure to check out this video's description on YouTube. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, be a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Dream Boat Contest. Next week, I'll be off the grid fly fishing in Montana, so the reports will be just from Fred. I'll see you in July. This is Tim C. Smith for TheFisherman.com. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evinrude Lowrance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2019 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details now at thefisherman.com.